highlights of the news today, 11th of January 2012. Rochdale Labour Councillor Farouk Ahmed has been suspended. Argentina has told its fishermen to catch squid before they reach the waters around the Falkland Islands. A group of anarchic revolutionaries have been arrested in Athens. An Iranian nuclear scientist has been assassinated by a bomb. Syria's troubles have escalated since the Arab League sent in its officials and thought for the day. UK News. Rochdale Labour Councillor Farouk Ahmed has been suspended and removed for smoking an illegal substance caught on a YouTube video. A special report came from our Rochdale organiser David O'Loughlin. Rochdale Labour Councillor Farouk Ahmed has quit his post as Cabinet Member for Finance at Rochdale Council after being caught smoking what appears to be a cannabis joint. Mr Ahmed, who is one of the many Asian councillors on Rochdale Council, says he has done nothing wrong as he was only smoking a herbal cigarette, but yet he was suspended by the Labour Party on Monday night. Mr O'Loughlin added, it looks like Mr Ahmed decided to jump before he was pushed. I think the good people of Rochdale need to ask if Mr Ahmed thinks his behaviour is good for the image of Rochdale and if he really has done nothing wrong, why is he not standing his ground and trying to prove he is innocent of the things he has been accused of? Argentina has told its fishermen to catch squid before they reach the waters around the Falkland Islands to put the British islanders under economic pressure. The Squid War, as it is called, is a dirty undermining scheme which is the start of a new attack on Britain by Argentina after their forces were humiliatingly defeated. The British government has sold our Harrier fleet to the US Marine Corps for a token £110 million for spare parts. The Harrier planes were the main part of returning the Falkland Islands back to Britain after the Argentinian invasion of 1982. Argentina and Chile are now interested in the Falkland Islands because oil has been found around its coast. New reports say that the job recruitment has fallen in the United Kingdom. The figures show that for the last three months permanent positions in the UK employment have continued to fall. Euronews. A group of anarchic revolu revolutionaries have been arrested in Athens, Greece. The 20 anarchists broke into a radio station to put out their left-wing terror messages create fear over the air. Police overpowered and arrested the domestic terrorists who are now behind bars. The scandal of Spain's ghost airport that cost millions to build has been brought to light again. 30 million euros have been spent on advertising the airport yet no one has boarded a plane there or taken off from it. Ex-footballer Eric Cantona is gathering signatures in France to stand in this year's elections for the presidency of France. Eric thinks that a footballer can do a far better job than Nicolas Sarkozy and many agree. World News An Iranian nuclear scientist has been assassinated by a bomb placed under his car. The Iranian government is blaming Israel for the attack. The university professor was working at a key nuclear plant. The Iranian government are outraged at what they say is an ongoing secret war against them by the United States and Israel. Mitt Romney has won the New Hampshire primary elections in the United States. Reports say he is coming ever closer to taking on Barack Obama in the forthcoming elections in November. He won by a comfortable lead in the voting. Syria's troubles have escalated since the Arab League sent in its officials to monitor the situation between government forces and protesters. It is estimated that since the Arab League sent the monitoring teams into Syria, at least another 400 people have been killed in violence and shootings in the last few weeks. North Korea has been standing back on the food offer aid from the United States just before the death of its leader Kim Jong-il. The United States tried to make the food aid into a deal to get North Korea to stop enriching uranium. The government officials stepped in and expressed their anger at the offer from the United States. Thought for the day. The Stephen Lawrence murder. Are you as sick of hearing about this murder for the last 18 years as I am? It was an awful thing to happen to this young man but put into perspective it was and is one of the many, many murders that occur in the UK each day of the month. What sets this one apart? 
Well, the obvious thing is that it was white on black and our media gobbled it up and spat it out relentlessly, rehashing and reopening the wound. We had marches, investigations and the renting of clothes. But the entire point of singling out this crime was to make sure that the white population of this country are being hounded under the guise of preventing racially generated crimes. £3.8 million was spent on forensics and a seemingly limitless amount of taxpayers' money during the last 18 years. The two men convicted have been guilty in the media's eyes since the murder and the fact that it was a gang crime perpetrated by a well-known gang in the area who beat up all nationalities in their locale is ignored. Why wasn't this time and money spent in the Damalola case? A poor little eight-year-old black boy left bleeding to death in a slum. I will tell you, because it was done by black youths. The truth of this matter is that black on black, Asian on black, black on Asian, Asian on white, and black on white have never loomed as large in the media as this Lawrence case has, some remaining virtually unreported in the press. Why? Because the Lawrence case has opened Pandora's box to the police, becoming even more endemically anti-white than they before, because they now have to be seen to be so. In their own words, employing more Asian and black officers means that not only will a white person fail to enter the police force now, but that what happens on our streets could easily become a third world police force out of control against indigenous residents. It's not a pleasant thought, is it? Second thought for the day, the HS2 through Buckinghamshire is a disgusting and unnecessary expenditure. When I stood for the British National Party in the general election in Buckingham, I was asked about it then and I voiced the party disapproval. My own thoughts are that there must be a lot of palms being greased for this to come off. It is costing so much more in these times when we are all paying off the national deficit one way or the other, and our countryside so under pressure already for new homes to be ruined for what? So that a few commuters, if there are any jobs left in Birmingham, London or further north in 2030, can cut minutes off their journey. No, big government contracts are the answer and they will employ what? British Labour? No. More jobs for more immigrants and more social engineering for us. This train, like the Channel Tunnel, will be the ruin of this country. So I say no, never, not on this green and pleasant land. And finally, to call police in the United Kingdom to report a crime, whether you are a victim or a witness, it will no longer be free. The new number 101 will cost you 15p to report, for example, if you are in bed and there's a burglar downstairs. One spokesperson commented that the British public should not be paying for the police telephone bill. The team of World at Eight welcome back their listeners to this new year of 2012. You have been listening to the World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I wish you all a very good night.